you will see here it is your PC configuration part means not only P, just it's a only heading but important is we'll see what is your system configuration and IP addresses first of all system configuration if someone is asked you a, a question okay what is your system configuration so what are the things we have to tell you know lot of people even the people from CSE background in I've asked some people MCA and uh, uh, MTech <laughs> even that people also will tell this kind of answer it is um, what is your system configuration or Lenovo 4320 or a HP Pavilion 14 okay so some number they will tell uh, configuration means what they have to tell okay so not your logo not your company not a model of company kind of stuff that is the secondary part very important what is your system configuration means what is your cpu what is your cpu is it intel cpu is it amd cpu is it i3 processor okay is it i7 processor what model it is which generation it is that is important and what is your RAM capacity? Is it 4 GB RAM, 8 GB RAM, 16 GB RAM? What is your hard disk? Nowadays, we are getting SSDs. So, is it a hard disk or SSD? Then what is their size? What is the available memory? Okay. What is the available? Disk space is available. How much available memory is there? Means how much available RAM? Total RAM versus available ram total hard disk space and uh, available hard disk space what is your operating system windows 10 then what is which edition it is which version it is right this these things you should know it and why we should know it that is another question what is another question we should know it but why we should know it that is another question, right? So I, I didn't add that uh, part uh, why we should know uh, here to know it. So one, one, one is like everybody is learn for your un, entire purpose only. But not only that purpose, guys, not only that one. It also is important to know your system configuration. I want to install an application. I want to install the application. For example, uh, I installed a, a very simple application is a Microsoft Teams or Atom or Intunes or a Oracle VM virtual box or a Google Chrome or maybe VMware Workstation Pro or VLC player okay or a SQL developer or a, some a video editor com Dash here yeah, something is there. So that application. Thing is, you want to install an application, you must know what is your system configuration. For example, I want to install some application. So I will give um, which application. For example, I want to install Eclipse. Yeah, <laughs> Eclipse game. Eclipse IDE. Uh, minimum requirements minimum system requirements it is we need a at least 1.4 minimum or a 5 or greater recommended java version is required java is installed or not so minimum is 512 mb memory means ram is required ram free disk ram 512 mb is required 1 gb or more is a recommended free disk space free disk space 300 MB minimum, 1 GB or more is required. So in a disk, you required more than 1 GB space. Okay. Um, processor, processor 1.5 gigahertz or a faster processor is required. So I want to install a Eclipse ID is an application. Now I want to install it. Then I will download it. Then I will install. Right. First of all, I have to download. 
then install. Before download and install, I want to check what are the minimum or a recommended system requirements. Is if I know my system, then I can think about like whether I can able to install or install Eclipse or not, right? So I want to install an application. I want to maintain an application. Uh, I want to work with my application. Uh, sorry, I want to run my computer smoother. So then better to know your system configuration. OK, for example, this is VMware workstation. So I installed a VMware workstation in this piece. OK, why it is I'm using VMware workstation so we can run some virtual machines inside. So this is an application VMware workstation is an application inside of this PC. We can run some. Uh, computers. OK. This is a Linux PC. My, my physical machine is Windows 10. So I want a, a work with a, I have a work with the Linux PC. I want to run the Linux PC here. I can run using this application. I create a virtual machine in the virtual machine. I installed a Linux operating system. Then I can work with it. You know, to do that one, we need a certain requirements certain requirements right what is your cpu your your memory is memory can is enough to run a virtual machine available memory to store your virtual machine you know space is there or not okay so and virtualization is there or not virtualization technology is there or not in your pc so in your cpu you can understand. So, guys, very simple it is. What is your system configuration? You got that point. So, then you have to tell your CPU, your RAM, your hard disk, or SSD, and your operating system is mainly important. And why we should know what is your system requirement? Why we should know why. Uh, so can we check it live like uh, CPU you told so what exactly in CPU we need to uh, know like uh, what is the storage area or what like that? Uh, I will tell. Good. OK. Very good. Very good. OK. Very um, Next hard disk or SSD total size and free disk space is also important. Okay, so additionally means that is for you it is important. Yeah, available memory is free disk space. Important. Operating system. What operating system? And it is a very good question. It is. What are the specific things we should know it? So CPU means you don't require CPU architecture. Which model it is? Intel or AMD? Which company you are using? Intel processor or AMD processor you are using? Right? Next, uh, in that one, which model it is? For example, uh, you are using i3 processor or maybe i5 processor. And maybe it is a AMD Ryzen uh, 5 processor. Some number is there, version number is there. It's a 12th generation. In Intel, you have a current version is 12th generation, 11th generation, 12th gen or 11th gen. Twelfth gen or eleventh gen. Okay, so are a, uh, some number will be there, generation number or ID number and all. Okay, clock speed. Speed is in respect like a two point five gigahertz. 
or a three three gigahertz. Just for example, I am telling. Okay. Next number of cores. Number of cores. Like uh, nowadays, all our core processor. For example, i3 uh, current uh, is a four core processor. Okay, like this. Two cores are there. Four cores are there. Four cores are there. Eight core processor is also there. Six core processor is there. Okay, like uh, when you see the mobile phone, octa core processor, teca core processor. Quad core processor, like number of cores. More than eight is also there. Eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. Depends upon purpose. Number of Second, guys, I will have. Okay. Now, okay, I'm. Okay, okay. Here I be. Okay. So these are the information. Okay. What completely if you are optional in a CPU? What is compulsory? Which model? Okay, which model means which company? Intel or AMD? Is it i5, i3 processor or some Pentium processor or gold processor? Or it's a Ryzen model or Athlon model kind of stuff? Is it having any generations? That is enough. Or a model numbers? Or a model numbers? Okay, model numbers. Or generations. So I'm using a i5 third generation. Current one is i5 fourth generation. i5 twelfth generation, right? So uh, still eleventh generation available. Or uh, you can say so. I last time I purchased one CPU that is a i3 9100F model. There's a model number. It's a ninth generation, but 9100 F. Okay. Are a 10 0 5 10 0 1 0 0 10 1 0 1 0 5 model. That is a 10th generation. But F model it is. Recently I have seen one model that is H model. And another model is U model. Okay. So the model number is also important nowadays to understand what kind of processor it is. Not only a processor number, okay, not only this or a only generation, the model number is also the so Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, and also there is a model number. Up to this is important, guys. Okay, from clock speed, it is purely optional. This is optional. The line first straight line is important. This is purely so clock speed. Uh, whether you tell or not, that is up to you. Because how many people will really remember the, the clock speed and all. 
number of cores, number of threads. This also similarly logical processors, four logical processor, four threads, or four logical processors, or eight logical processors. Yes, Sometimes no no logical processors. Only number of cores are there. No logical processor. No logical processor. No logical processor represent number of cores and number of threads are equal. It means it's no logical processor. Separate logical processors are not there. Yeah, if you don't get it, also no problem. But important is when you say a word a CPU, you have to tell a word which company it is, which model it is, what is their model number. Okay, or uh, at least tell about generations. Then speed. Number of cores, number of threads, cache memory, cache memory, cache memory. So L1, L2, L3 memories are there. So important one is L3 memory. L3 memory. It is like a my system is 3 MB. Cache memories are very less, guys. Small sizes. Some systems are having 6 MB. Some system are having a 12 memory, like that. So cache memories. And uh, nowadays we are using a 32 bit, 64 bit. So which bit it is? 32 bit processor, 64 bit processor. Nowadays we are using 64 bit mainly because it's a 64 bit there is a virtualization is it enabled or not or which type of virtualization there virtualization technology or virtualization enables enable or not enable or disable status Okay, I already I told guys, these are purely optional. But when you got a chance, when you got a chance to note this information, get it. Okay, so this is about your CPU. Knowing about your CPU, is it a, your CPU is a 32 bit CPU or 64 bit CPU? How much cache memory it is? Number of cores? Number of threads. Okay, is it a virtualization technology is there inside your CPU? Is it enabled or not? If it is not enabled, it is showing disabled, then how to enable it? How to know the specifications of CPU? Maximum RAM support and all. All other specifications are so many. Not only these, there is a lot of specifications are there, but least to least this specification. Common. Common to know it for ourselves but when you are telling don't no need to go to this much of depth guys if you go it's okay that is up to you but you have to give answer clearly you have to tell each and everything about a information clearly don't murmur it otherwise concentrate on a only this part next one is ram what is ram Random access memory, we know all the RAM kind of stuff. Sir, you don't, I uh, should not ask RAM what it is. So first of all, you have to tell RAM size because people are very interested to know the size of the RAM. Like, a, is it a 4 GB RAM? Is it a 8 GB RAM? 16 GB RAM? 32 GB RAM? Size of the RAM is important. Size of the RAM decides speed of the system mainly. So size of size of RAM is matters always. Uh, sir, you said size of RAM decides speed of processor. 
No, no, no. Speed of system. Okay. Speed of system, not speed of processor. Speed of the processor already decided. Size of the RAM increases. So automatically more processing, more data can able to flow from uh, your RAM to processor, processor to RAM kind of stuff. Then speed of data uh, means speed of system increases. So applications, okay. multiple applications, we can run very easily. Okay. And of course, cache memory, we cannot change because once you are taken a processor, the cache memory is fixed. RAM is not fixed, right? So RAM, we can able to add it. And there is a lot of things are there that is we will discuss. But very good. That is speed of the RAM increases. Generally, speed of RAM increases system speed performance increases speed increases are performance increases. multiple applications you can able to uh, run okay so so once we are like we buy the system uh, we will not be able to increase the size of ram no you purchase a normal desktop generally it is very easy to increase but you purchase a laptop it's a fresh laptop so better to take to the service center and okay. ask them to increase your RAM capacity. Okay. The event. Okay. Uh -huh. Means it, it, it can be increased. Yeah, it can be increased. For example, so I want to buy a laptop. Okay. Yeah, I want to buy a laptop. Not showing here, right? Hmm. Electronics, computers. Laptop and accessories. Okay, so so this is a regular desktop, HP desktop. Um, yeah, here it is. Some laptop logo is there. Select any laptop. So it's a gaming laptop. Ryzen. Processor name is Ryzen. Okay, we have uh, taken this laptop. So it is a Lenovo Idea Pad Gaming 3. So, what is the specification? i5 processor, 11th generation, 8 GB RAM, 512 GB SSD, 4 GB graphics. So, you cannot change this 4 GB graphics because it's a, a dedicated graphic card inside uh, of that one. Okay, so we don't know how to change directly so that we cannot do it anything, but it's a um, you can go to the specifications and we can find uh, what is the maximum RAM support how much we can able to expand a okay that kind of stuff it is a ram install size is 8 gb maximum memory support is 16 gb and it is a ddr4 model it is telling okay that's it or otherwise go to your processor this is the processor model 11 uh, 300h model just take this model Search in a Google. Go to this. You'll get it about a CPU and maximum RAM support. So it is C. This is the processor. Your number of cores are four. If we click on question mark, it will tell what is number of cores also. Number of threads are eight. Four point four gigahertz processor. Cache memory is eight GB, eight MB cache memory. Yeah, it support up to 64 GB RAM. So you can increase if you are using this processor. You can put a RAM is up to 64 GB. And RAM okay. type of it is telling. Okay. And other information yes, you can get it from here. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. In this specification, in the in this 
specifications it came with 8 gb we said it can increase up to 16 gb means you can add another 8 gb in my case my laptop when uh, it is purchased that time it is a 4 gb ram laptop came with a 4 gb ram i added 8 gb then it is become 12 gb total capacity is 16 gb but i have only two ram slots one already filled with four and another one i add a eight now it is become 12. okay so but here we are not able to see the ram uh, in memory sir i have this laptop So that memory of 11.9 GB, that is total memory, which are uh, like uh, that is RAM actually or what? Yeah, very good. Um, uh, I will uh, point wise, I will directly explain it. Oh. Sir, I have this laptop. Yeah, tell me, yeah, tell me, tell me. Sir, I have this laptop. Uh, this one. Idea pad. Very good. So last time I went to a shop, the shop uh, is a Bajaj Electronics. Asked like uh, how to expand this memory. The guy said uh, you should go to um, uh, the service center so they don't expand. So like I expand, I went to normal shop after one or two years of use only, I uh, added it. So guys, you can see it is two of two slots, two of two slots. It means laptop, if you open a back side, there is a two RAM slots are there like this. Okay. Two RAM slots are there. Just already it contains 4 GB in one RAM slot. In another RAM slot, I put a 8 GB RAM. Now tell me how much RAM I have. Already 4 is there. I added a 8. Now how much I have? Twelve. 12. So this is my 12 GB DDR3 model. It is a old laptop, so that's it. It is a DDR3 model. I have mm -hmm. used two slots directly. Two slots only there. Two slots I used it. Already one slot is with 4 GB. Another slot I added 8 GB. Now it is a 12 GB. This is your total memory. And memory model. Okay. Uh, in my laptop it is showing the slot used one of two. So I can add more one uh, 8 yeah, GB slot. It is a one of two. Very good. It is a one of two. Uh, uh, so we can have one add. more slot is left. Okay, okay. We can add it and increase the RAM, right? I can increase the RAM. But how much we can add that we need to check into uh, Google. Like what is the maximum? Yeah, compulsory. Too important. Okay. In generally, better go with the company manual. Okay. You check with your uh, organization. Okay, company. Which model it is and how much we can able to increase the RAM. Okay. So that is the best way. Uh, if it is a desktop type, it is a desktop type means your motherboard and your processor. Processor is also important. So it depends upon your processor, your, your motherboard. So you can increase the RAM and uh, better to check with your company website or uh, where you purchase can increase the RAM. If you are in Hyderabad, it is very easy. There is a center called a CDC. Okay. So there uh, you can, if it is once warranty completed, your warranty is done, so you can go, you can take your laptop there directly, they will open, they will insert a RAM. If your your uh, laptop is under warranty, so don't try to change anything yourself inside your laptop because warranty will gone. 
compulsory you have to take it to the their service center then you can upgrade okay that is a be careful thing so see it is already came with a 12 gb 16 gb ram directly it is a already came with a 16 gb ram this one also it is supporting like a, you can take this cpu search in a google then you will get a intel website to go to this intel website you can understand about this cpu it's a 1235u piece of cpu number of cores are 10 but efficient cores are 8 performance is a two core processor number of threads are 12 Okay, this is the speed, 64 GB up to 64 GB. Supporting models are this. So it depends upon your motherboard, which model you are using. That will be depends upon your motherboard. The processor uh, built-in graphics. Okay. Very good. in this one also you can find somewhere like in a specifications or somewhere it will written will be read, right right uh, what is the ram size and maximum supporting size i don't trust this one. hello yeah tell me sir sir actually in uh, laptop or computer system uh, some of the default uh, uh, graphics available already sir like 2.4 gigahertz like this these all are available inside the laptop or computer system but whenever we are try to extend they are the capacity then how it's difficult to manage the data sir graphics you are asking graphics yeah 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 because external graphics we are not adding in system or laptop anywhere sir why sir uh, guys if you are using a desktop on desktop you have a pcs slots so you can go to desktop motherboard okay so i am going to images i will show you the pcs slots kind of stuff and mainly the direct agp slot is there okay so yes. you see this is a graphic card you can insert a graphic card this is we can put two but in generally you will get a one yeah yeah in one graphic card slot is there Okay. Yes, sir. But so in CPU, it's easy to. Yeah, tell me. In CPU, it's easy to add, but whenever we have to use this one inside the laptop, or uh, no, like think that. Don't add, have. I don't think. Direct yeah, uh, this kind yeah. of facilities. Of course, yeah, yeah. school will tell us uh, some jumping facilities are there, but I don't know yeah. whether it really works or not. Okay. This so, only creating tensions during the putting inside the laptop, not in the CPU. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I got it. Okay, so you insert a graphic card in a desktop, means normal uh, desktop computers. Okay, it we have a facility, but you purchase a laptop. There is no graphic card inserting facility. It is a Onboard built-in chip it is. Okay, this onboard inside your laptop there is a board, processor uh, and a RAM slot board. Everything is there. It is onboard built-in chip or maybe a small connection. That's it. Will be there. onboard it is. So you cannot change it, and we don't find any specific slot for that. That's why when you purchase a laptop, don't hurry. okay even i want to buy a new laptop this is a very old laptop in myself i want to buy a new laptop but problem is if you got with the graphic memory like this good 4 gb good or you want put a more money you will get 8 uh, uh, 6 gb 8 gb like that you will get it okay so like you go to gaming laptops okay so how much uh, gaming uh, you want it that much you can able to uh, memory you can able to select it this is ram size 
this is dedicated memory card size you want 8 gb then select 8 gb and you purchase based on that 8 gb okay this is the cost so you cannot increase or decrease or remove the cards like you can disable it if it is there but you cannot add if it is not there okay so that's the problem with your laptops laptops are not meant for anything so better you want a more gaming kind of stuff or maybe more about a multimedia not only graphic cards are not only meant for a gaming also for a multimedia video editing video editing um, you know build uh, some apps this graphic related apps gaming apps so we need it better is desktop in a desktop each and every component as per your requirement you can change it very easy way like you can change your motherboard you can change your processor you can change your graphic card you can change your ram also okay so you want to invest invest on a desktop for a different purposes you want to only mobility mobility is more important so you are moving from one place to another place continuously you need a mobility then compulsory laptop don't require any mobility best one is desktop okay uh, yes sir so how do we distinguish between uh, like which one is better i3 processor i5 processor like uh, one thing is always better than other thing but important is two one is budget right oh, yes sir first is budget second one is uses for example what is my uses what is my uses uh, continuously i'm taking some theory classes nowadays by showing something and all i don't require very big ram and all but mm -hmm. when I'm taking some practical classes, I need a more virtual machines I'm running. Okay, this is a 12 GB RAM. That is also not enough. Uh, so not enough because available, see, 4 GB, 4.5 GB, 5 GB available memory. It is. So I want to have to run a virtual machines. I have to run a, some applications like a Python related application or maybe a Linux virtual machines you have to run, okay? Or maybe a Windows server virtual machines you have to run. So memory is not enough. So even I want to buy, see, this is a very good laptop. I want to what we are seeing. It's a good laptop because we got a 4 GB graphics. Maximum we can able to play new operating system, Windows 11. And the storage is very less for me, for me and RAM is very less. i5 is enough because i5 processor is a four core eight thread processor. That is enough. Problem is remaining is not. I want a system with a 16 GB RAM. I want a system with a 16 GB RAM. Graphics is four GB is enough but I need a starting with a 16 GB RAM and i5, i7, two processors, both are better. i9 is a war budget. That much we not required. i5 is enough for me. i7 is also good, but i9 is not. And i3 is not enough. Okay. So if I go to i9, yes, more cost. And uh, that is not required anyway. That much requirement is not there. Instead of purchasing i9, I'll uh, put a i7 and increase my RAM capacity. Or maybe I will go to i5, I'll increase my RAM and disk capacity. Okay. i3 is not enough for me. Okay. i3 is a general purpose, means you want to check the mails. You want to do some programming, you want to learn Python kind of stuff, you want to run one or two virtual machines. 
Okay, you can use it. Better to use like a i3 nowadays minimum 8 GB RAM. So still some people are purchasing 4 GB RAMs, guys. Don't buy. Go with the 8 GB RAM. i3 8 GB. This is the least configuration as per me. i5 8 or 16 GB RAM. Good. Good. 8 is okay. 16 is good. i7 16 better and uh, storage of course the storage is also a big challenge nowadays ssds are too much costly <laughs> okay yeah, anything guys any anything uh, we'll forget uh, where are we i'm sorry yes yeah Uh, no, you cleared my doubt, so. Okay, okay, good then. So two important things about a RAM is what is the size of the RAM and model of the RAM? Is it a DDR3, DDR4, DDR5? Which model you are using? Of course, the availability of memory is also important. If you see here, it is the available memory, 4.7 GB available memory, 4 GB available. 2 GB available availability of memory. Next hard disk. Anyway, you are getting big hard disk, right? 500 GB, 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte hard disk. SSDs start with a 240, 180 also there, 120, 240, 500, 1 terabyte. Hard disk SSD is also there. Free disk space. Free disk space. Free disk space means C drive. C space. Okay. So, how much my C drive free space is available? You see, it is 22.5 GB. Free space is available. Free spaces. See, it is 22.5, it's 6.19, 76.7, 21.5, 102 GB for uh, F drive, 32.9 GB for uh, H drive. So, how much it is? Free disk space. First is C drive, and then go for other drives also. D drive, E drive, also go for it. Next operating system. So are you using a Windows operating system or a Linux operating system? Or you're using a Mac operating system? Are you using a Mac operating system, Mac X? Are using a Linux or using a Unix operating systems? Which operating system you are using? What edition it is? Any edition points are there? For example, I am using Windows 10 Home Edition. Okay, so are you Home Edition, Pro Edition, and that stuff? Okay, guys, these are the Build the details if possible. Okay. Just gathering ourselves, knowing where this information is available is also important. Just I showed some information from the task manager. I will close the task manager and I will open the task manager. Also. The first thing is, what is your system configuration? If you got that question or you want to write down on a some place, about your system configuration or you want to install some application or you want to do certain task on your system so for that one you have to check your system configuration so what are the things you have to check it 
about your CPU, which model it is, which uh, type of processor you are using, okay? Uh, what is that model, generations, speed, number of cores, number of threads, cache memory, which bit so it is, 8-bit processor, 64-bit oh. processor? Yeah, tell me. Uh, so what is that number of cores like? Uh, what does it mean? Okay, that is uh, CPU. You know, olden days, people are using a processor like this. Mm -hmm. So they put a number of transistors in a processor. Processor is nothing but a chip. Okay, so processor mm -hmm. is nothing but a chip. CPU. Processor both names are same central processing unit. Okay, some people be, think like a CPU means it's a desktop uh, that box. No, that is a cabinet. CPU is a simple chip. There's a number of transistors are there inside. So number of transistors increases. Size of processor will be increases. Like up to oh. Intel Pentium 4, they develop the processor. And they need a more high processing. So they started using in a mainly server motherboards, multiple processor sockets means one board. We can put a multiple processors. I'm telling a big story. But listen, very soon. So yes. someone invented like this. Instead of adding a one processor, one processor like that in a servers, in a commercial means normal users, normal regular desktop users. So they're also required to add the multiple processors. That is difficult. So what they done, they sandwiches like a not sandwich, two processors, they combine together and shared with a single cache. What is this cache? It load instructions, the catchy, catchy to the processor. Load instruction to the catchy, catchy to the processor. So it speed up the processing. Why? Because of catchy is a one single catchy. It load instruction and data and give it to the processors. So two processor take one single task and share it and do it. So obviously the task uh, related processing is very faster. But there is a problem. But how many will add it? And it is a effect on a multitasking. Then what the people are done, instead of adding two processor together, they divide a processor into two parts. Each part is like a core zero, core two. The so two cores, one processor divided into two parts. Okay. The so core one, core two are a core zero, core one processor. And they have their own cache memories. Okay. They have their own cache memory. Each part having separate, separate cache memory. It means this cache runs a task. This cache runs another task. So what happens here? That's same time. Yes, very good. Two process will be work done at a time. So you don't need to increase the size of the processor. Simply processor is same. You divide into the things. So processor, whether it is small processor or very big, big size processor, important is it it can able to handle the task. Normally one by one task, now multiple tasks can able to handle and faster it will complete the task. Okay, so that is called a core to dual processor. This is a dual core processor. This is core to geo. Same concept one single processor divided into four parts. So this is called a quad core processor. Quad core processor. So of course later on days 
i3 i5 i7 i9 processors came into market those are nothing but a core processors only okay like that next one is what is this threads so each one is a one single core right it's a core 0 core 1 core 2 core 3 means four core processor and each core again having a another layer okay it's not cut it is added a layer additional layer to each core that is called a logical processor similarly like a, it is a, having a property of dual core and as well as go to zero model okay so it means each one is a double layer means two core dual layer each layer it each part is like a dual layer and we have a four layers like that four cores like that so that is called a threads number of threads it's a four core processor number of threads are eight number of threads are eight so then it will give both uh, multitasking faster and as well as the faster uh, processing speed okay so when you are purchasing a laptop or a desktop or only a processor few things compulsory have to check it what is the processor and go to that model processor model number and search in a google so what is my processor and what is my processor model number search in the intel website what is this processor means you will get a lot of information about a speed number of cores number of threads and cache memory number of cores number of threads and cache memory influence the speed of the processor so higher it is always a better so do not fall for a higher kind of stuff but i'm telling within our budget range or within our range or within enough range better to take number of cores number of threads and a bigger cache memory kind of stuff and compulsory of course digital virtualization technology compulsory it is there but you can try and all systems are mostly 64 so better to uh, take it maximum ram support maximum ram support type of ram support it is also there Uh, virtualization technology so what i am talking that is in okay so cpu memory are they okay so yes i am keep telling about this one but how to check the system configuration okay you want all this information you want to know about your cpu you want to know about your ram you want to know about your um uh, other things like uh, your operating system you want to know about your hard disk so then how do you how can you know it so how to check the system configuration how to check the system configuration easiest way is task manager easiest way is task manager how to open the task manager one is can you see this is the task bar you see this uh, scissor point excel why excel is there here close it and an outlook notepad same thing right in this empty space right click go to task manager task manager will give you very is task, opening task manager is very easy and very lot of use of this task manager so we will see what are there on the task manager so first one is process so what is the process is running how much it is utilizing your cpu memory disk and network and gpu 
So what is this process and how much it is utilizing your CPU, memory, disk and network and GPU. Next one is performance. To go to the first point is CPU. Go to the first one, this is CPU. Okay, so here it is. What is your processor? Intel processor. i5 3230M processor. If you want to know about this particular model, you can put it in a Google. So Intel website will directly will tell what is the kind of processor it is, what are the other specifications of this processor. Google will get it easily. Okay. So it is Intel i3 i5 i3 sorry i5 3230M processor, 2.6 gigahertz processor it is 2.6 gigahertz processor it is one processor socket that is one single processor I have and can you see number of cores number of logical processors number of cores are two number of logical processors are four virtualization technology enabled virtualization technology is enabled if not enabled you have to enable from BIOS settings that is separately like you can search in Google or you can watch my one or any previous videos not not now it is not the time and you can see cache memory and that to l3 cache memory is 3 mb only okay so what is the cache memory so how many things we are uh, get it your cpu what is your cpu okay which company it is what model it is what is the speed number of cores number of sockets sorry number of cores number of logical processor cache memory information and virtualization information also we got it logical processor i just explained before here only so these are the number of cores the number of threads are number of logical processors are inside means the division of core into multiple parts or sub parts i'll show you so i3 sorry i5 minus 3230m I want to know about my process. So from ark.intel.com. So number of cores. A core is a hardware term that describes number of independent central processing units in the single computer computing component. It's a DIRC where applicable hyper threading technology is only available in a performance course okay you have a hyper threading technology then okay hyper threading technology due to that number of threads will be printed created someone asked me a question why there are eight threads in a quad core Quad means quad means four four cores. Quad means four core. Each core further develop and you become a four, two logical. Are two threads. Each core each core so is treated like a two logical or a two threads means one is having two so then we have a four core then it is a eight threads sometimes four core four logical four core four logical four core no logical four core eight logical till now i didn't see anything uh, higher than that one and that too it is a performance efficient and performance course the number of cores difference can be there depends upon performance score Okay.
Okay, so this is your task manager. What are the information, CP information, you got it. So it is Intel processor and your processor model and what is a, its clock speed. Number of cores, number of logical processors, virtualization technologies enabled, L1, L2, L3, cache memories. Second one, about a memory. What is the memory kind of stuff? Okay, so my total RAM is 12 GB DDR3 model and the available current available is 4.5 showed earlier 4.7 now it is 4.5 the available memory always varies guys but it is a main memory and total memory is 12 GB and it is DDR3 speed is 1600 megahertz clock speed and of course this is a laptop it shows sodium form factor. It's a package kind of stuff. This is hard disk. This is your hard disk. This is your hard disk. It is 500 GB. Hard disk. I have two hard disks, don't worry. I have two hard disks. Oh. So this is another hard disk. This one terabyte. 500, one terabyte hard disk. This is my Wi Fi. Wi Fi. Yes. This is the Wi Fi router name. So this is my Wi Fi adapter name my SSD, my IP address, okay? This is about my graphic card, built-in. It's a 2GB graphic card. Dedicated memory is 2GB dedicated memory. Okay, this is how to check the system configuration. But what are the things I checked about CPU and uh, uh, which company like Intel processor, i5 processor, 3230M model. And uh, we, we got a speed of the processor, number of cores, number of threads, cache memory, okay. virtualization technologies enabled. This information we got. Next, what is the RAM size? What is the RAM size? Mine is 12 GB. There is no 12 GB, right? It is a 4 plus 8. And it is a DDR3. And the available memory is 4.6. What is uh, your hard disk size? I have a two hard disks. So one is 500 GB, other one is 1 terabyte. What is my operating system that is not showing here? Okay, that is not showing. And uh, I showed how to open a task manager very simple way, but there is a different ways to open a task manager. So one is go to run. Task MGR. Another one is the run task MGR. The task manager opens. Or you can go to search. Task, then directly task manager came or you can use task MGR also. Okay, and another one is which I cannot able to show you that is 
alt control delete so in your system you press alt control delete you'll get a sign out and other information there is also there is a task manager so you can go to task manager guys understand up to how to check system configuration using task manager so yes sir okay. yes sir Another two ways we can see MS Info 32. If you know how to open run like a Windows R, there is a Windows button and R you press, then you will get a run. So in that one, you can type MS Info 32. MS Info 32. You don't know. For example, you don't know how to open run. Then you can simply go to search MS Info 32. It shows system information. So open the system information. And just a wait. You can see here it is in your system information. Here also you can find some kind of here it is what it is your windows 10 home single language that is my operating system my operating system version operating system version my system my processor i5 3230m 2.6 gigahertz two core four logical processors it's a 64 bit PC. It's a 64 bit PC. And this is your RAM. That is your total RAM. So this is another way to get a. Next one is hard disk. You go to components, storage, disk. This is the total size 500 CB number of partitions. So this is one terabyte of disk and these many partitions. Okay. So Component, storage, disk. In that one you can see all your disk, their partitions. Okay, so what are the information what we required? General requirement, what is your operating system, Windows 10 Home Edition, and what is your processor? So this is your processor. 30 db or 64. And the next one is what is your physical RAM? You got that information. Let's go to storage. So then it is at the disk. Next one is DX Diag. DX Diag. Same thing, you can go to run or you can directly put it in a search. Guys, DX Diag is not to check your system configuration. This is system information, but DX Diag is not a system configuration but using ds diag we can know what is your system configuration it is actually direct text diagnostic tool so it's mainly dealing with your uh, graphic memories like a graphic cards or a, um, stuff so what is this displaying displaying your operating system your processor your memory and your graphic card. This, this is my graphic card. Display graphic card. So this is your system configuration. Last one is 
the one more in, in, very important. Go to Windows button, click on here, settings. Go to system, first one. Go to system, scroll down, click on uh, about. So this is your system information. So what is your processor? What is installed memory? 32 bit or 64, it's a 64 bit system. And it is your uh, operating system. And what edition it is? And what version it is? Okay, so this is another one. So how to go? Go to the settings, click on system, scroll down, click on about. What is your processor? Total RAM, your uh, 64 bit uh, operating system. Of course, it is a plus 10 home edition and version. These are the ways to check the uh, system configuration. In the command prompt, we, we can know system info, but that is not give. Uh, what we want directly. It will give some information, but not exactly. So this is it is. This is your RAM. This is your RAM. 64 bit RAM. Not directly that RAM is not shown. And your operating system. And operating system build version. Some other Just totally we will have class till how much uh, PM? Yeah, I'm about to finish. Okay, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm also not able to sit. Give me a lot of time. Which page? This page or a... Uh, Okay, mostly in this one, I specified what you can able to find, okay. how to find kind of stuff. And I finally have written what is the system configuration means, what are the things you have to tell. Okay, okay. some other information not required. This is from here, IP addresses. Actually, two parts I have to tell. First of all, because it's a most important in questions, general questions. Or what is your system configuration? How to check system configuration? Next one is how to check IP address. What is an IP address? Okay, uh, and uh, some other information. But today is for uh, as a first day. For some people, it is completely fresh, right? So don't uh, attack on the first day. So tomorrow we'll see about a, how to check IP address and what is MAC address. And you got an IP address, how you configure that one means how you got that IP address. Okay. And about a DHCP, uh, about a DNS, like a few basic points only. Okay. Any, uh, any doubt guys about this current topic? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Manoranjan got a question that is how how this page is when means this page or uh, this page. Slide slides you want it? Good, very good. Okay, guys, meet you tomorrow again, three o'clock. Okay, any changes I will tell, but generally it is a three o'clock and the same link only. So link also not changing. Okay. Same link only. Already I shared this uh, PPT link. So only thing is uh, that record I will, once I upload it, uh, I, I will, I will uh, 